got a new arrival and if this is what I think it is this is the first one out of five clocks that I've just bought so let's see what it is I always save the bubble wrap because you can reuse it and sending other stuff back out again. Shit, Shit. something's missing from the top. Already. Alright, so this is what I've got. And what is disappointing is, is that that bit there is broken. And I will check on the site that I bought the clock, if that bit was on there. It looks freshly snapped. I'll just give you a close up of that. There, you can see that that's just freshly snapped. That hasn't happened years ago. If I'm lucky, it will be somewhere in the parcel and I can try to reinstate it but there you go a really nice looking French clock again my favorite a big fat key and a message see inside striker has been tied to gong okay that's fair enough there's a better view reason why I like this particular clock was because of the three domes on top. It's a, a little bit more unusual to what I'm used to. This uh, will involve me, uh, refurbishment of this one, will involve me detaching all of this so that I can pull out these columns and polish up the brass and then um, put them all back together. Uh, I'm not sure whether these tops should be black or should they be, and I think they're going to be brass anyway. Um, can't tell at this point, they might be marble. Yeah, pretty sure they are marble. I was going to say, if they were brass, I would polish them all up and make them all um, bright and whatever but at, um, at worst I'll polish these uh, bits up yeah I'll have a tea it's um, tea with homemade pizza today I did say like we only talk about food in this house Look around the back of this and there, and you can see there's quite a bit of movement in there. I'm not sure where it's detached from because the straps holding the face on are connected. So while I'm moving this, the actual uh, dial isn't moving, so somewhere something else has got separated it could be one of the pins which holds the mechanism together has fallen out so it may only be holding on two pins or even one pin as opposed to three but let's see when I get around to it sellotape spot here but there you go one of my latest projects first thing we do is undo these two screws here which hold the straps or connected to the straps from the front of the clock to the back of the clock so basically the whole mechanism in the dial is sandwiched between the uh, case of the clock just by these two screws. As usual, supporting the dial 
when we right hand one arm do that with me left hand I just turn this around <coughs> and there you go there you go that's the whole clock out together the first thing I noticed which and I was right when I said it there's a pin missing right here which is what was causing the clock to swivel like that that's not a problem so we got that there's a ah, that little bit for the top and of course the pendulum okay i thought i was recording i wasn't but what i've done so far is i've just taken the hands off put them to one side and next job will be to detach the bezel from the mechanism usually three screws around the side and what is unusual is that there's a screw on the strap here and that's that is unusual these straps are normally kind of spot welded in and that does go through the bezel so there's a chance that these straps might have been changed at some point As you, you probably hear a lot of people on YouTube saying this is much harder when I'm trying to film it and they're right because sometimes you just sort of grab something and put it in your lap to hold it but anyway that's that off now in theory there's the bezel and there's the face I'll just remove these pins in fact the pins that are on this it's like a little thing that I do sometimes there are uh, nails and someone's ground them down into a point I can tell they're nails because they've got like the little grooves in them little pins have nails um, little nails have little grooves in them to stop them from springing out again all right this is um, a little bit different to what I've worked on before I I normally find everything in here is brass but this is this bit here is metal uh, it's to do with the striker system the bell system this bit across here that ties in these two ratchet wheels there that's also metal never seen that before it almost looks well that almost looks prefabricated to me but then seeing that I don't imagine someone's prefabricated that so maybe this is all natural in pretty good condition because they these little ratchet locks here uh, tend to be quite rusty but in this case they're not it's a piece of wire here which acts like a a spring oh look it's striking nice 
nice. Right, let's just see the make of this one. The Britannia Movement, manufactured in France. And it's got a little uh, serial number on there as well, which is nice. This is all quite tarnished, which will look, uh, gives me, uh, I'm always happy when I see them tarnished because I look forward to what they look like once they've come out of the ultrasonic machine and been all cleaned up. Also, um, something else you see here, let me give you a little close up. That pivot point looks like it's been um, repivoted or uh, rebushed, that's the term. Something which I'm desperate to try and learn and have a go at. Luckily up to now I haven't needed to use that process for anything. But uh, I'm looking at buying the tools which do re-pivot. Especially when you're doing these old clocks. You're always going to come across a time when you're going to need to re-pivot or re-bush something. The other thing that I notice um, with this clock. The gears have got these lantern type um, cogs as opposed to um, you know the standard gear type um, or what do you call those uh, not good with technical terms yet but yeah the, these are sort of um, bits of wire which go to create a gear which will mesh with the next wheel I did come across this on another clock that I've bought which um, it was a French clock, but it was butchered and not butchered, but someone's put a French, um, an American movement in there and Sonia movement. And that's what they've got. But I know this is a French movement, so I'm just going to have to take lots of photographs of this one as I dissemble it to make sure I know how to put it back together. First of all, off the back of this clock, I want to Remove the strike arm. Or the hammer. And then around the front, I'll have to let down the um, tension from the springs before I can go any further with disassembly. I like to use these um, clock legs or whatever, I don't know what the real name is. They're a cheap buy, they're like 15 quid or so for three of them. And me being me, I reckon I, reckon I could have made these for like two quid. <laughs> but I'm pretty much like that with everything. Any time my wife says she needs a new piece of furniture I said, well, show, show me what it is maybe I'll make it it's not even out of tightness it's just out of um, I think I can make things better than the manufacturers make them I can't really but um, you know, that's what I get in my tiny brain and plus all the fun of putting everything together One of the things I've yet to buy, and it's the most sort of fundamental tool you should have as a clockmaker, is a, a letdown tool to let down the um, energy from the mainsprings. Uh, I do it like in a stupid way. I'll use the key for now. What I do is undo the spring which holds the tension on. And remove that now the tension of this of the mainspring will keep the um, keep that little click thing um, locked in place now you, some of this might not get seen because my hands might be in the way but the idea is I'll put my key on here turn the um, turn the key to sort of release the ratchet from the uh, mainspring and then 
try to control the spring going down using the key. So uh, apologies in advance for what you don't see. Because once you've let go of that click, once you release that click, you're at the mercy of this thing. Oh, it turns out there was hardly any pressure in that one. And again, for the other side. This one really does feel tight. I'm sure any real clock makers would be screaming at me now and be like, you idiot. Just go and spend 15 quid and get yourself a letdown tool. And I am going to buy one. It's not yet. Yeah, I've done. Okay, um, I might as well remove these as well while I'm at it. As I say, important to take lots of photographs, and I've stopped um, between shots here to take some photographs of the of the dial side and the back side and lots of side photographs for now and there will be more pictures once I open up the whole thing and then the other thing is um, photographs of what screws go where because you know, often the screws can look very similar to each other but if you take good clear photographs sometimes and I've had to do it you zoom in and you almost count the threads when two screws look alike I can't, this one's not quite an obvious one because it's got like a shoulder on it but uh, I've had to count threads before Sometimes, but these these pins are so fine, which is unusual in these clocks. I don't know which way they pin to come out. Decent set of pliers would help as well, not these manky old ones. So far so good. is interesting this I thought this plate was just going to lift off but it's not 
quite so simple. Yeah, this is definitely different to anything else I've worked on up to now. There's a few bits on here that I've never seen before, like this spring. And the way these springs fit in, um, they sort of go into a hole and tuck under. There you go. With that little lip. Um, oh, I don't know what to take off next. Let's go at it randomly. I think I'll turn it over now and start undoing the back plate See, there's an interesting thing, whether that's right or wrong. The screw on this side is shorter than the screw that was on that side. And there's a reason for that, because beneath here we've got the governor fan, that little flat piece of metal that spins around. So if that screw was any longer, it would stop it from spinning. Something I'm going to have to try and remember when I'm putting this all back together. Yeah, you could tell all my clocks are out of time. They just all chime whenever they want to, but I don't care because it sounds nice. Maybe it's good to have them spaced out like that. So I've got like the constant ringing in my ears, a bit like the tinnitus that I've got. Right. Let's see if I can lift this off really quick. Oh, here we go, a bit start falling out. I was going to say without anything falling out so that I can photograph. Right, there's the back plate. And there is the indication of the new bushing. Fortunately, all the other holes look fine. They're nice and round. They're not elongated in any way. There's a lot going on in there. I'm going to stop and take some photographs before I carry on with this video. Maybe I'll even make myself a cup of tea. Right, a few photographs and a cup of tea later. I'm back at the table, ready to start taking things apart. There is like literally a forest of cogs in this clock. Now that one's in there, locked from the other side for whatever reason. 
as I'm taking them out I'm just checking them for wear, broken teeth and whatever other things may be wrong with them. And so far everything is looking good. Interesting looking thing with a star shape on it. That's locked on the other side as as that is. Okay, so um, main springs. I'll just add that. little X on there well, I don't want to come out either I'm missing something here and I don't know what it is now, I don't know if you can see that video and I try and see it there there seems to be like a little screw thread down there which comes out to this side to what is not a screw but just a, a pin I'm not sure what I'm meant to do with that this uh, This cog, which is connected to this thing here, that must be friction fitted, which means a little bit of force. Oh God, how much force? I would have thought I should be able to yank that off. I'll come back to that bit. For now, um, so well, little X on that one which I've got, and I'll put an X down here a little zero over there, and a little zero over there, just in case they fall out when I try to take this apart. Now, will that stand up without bothering anything? Yes. Um, now, this little bit here looks like it should unscrew according to the other side, but I'm not sure how. Oh, it's turning. Yes, it's come off. Which means now that comes off. And the ratchet wheels should also come off. Do you know what? I also want to mark these as well. I like to put everything back in its original place. So if there's been wear, um, the item it's rubbing onto 
um, would have worn along with it and then perhaps they fit better that's probably a load of rubbish anyway but that's just me so this one was the one with the X that'll be that one and that'll be my zero one this these bits here which are friction fitted mm. scared of damaging them Yep, that's one. Yeah, fortune favours the brave. Is that what they say? Oh. About this one, though. This one's got two little pins sticking out of it, which I've got to be careful of. I'm not sure. It's definitely got to come this way keeping an eye on those two pins as well yeah that's coming upwards yep little pins are still intact and there's that wheel as well that spring I'm gonna just leave that one on there for cleaning and that's it this is all ready to go into the ultrasonic now and then be put back together what I'll also do meanwhile is Um, open up these springs and check their condition as well maybe unwind them and give them a clean at the very least but it felt uh, one side of the mechanism felt like it slipped as I was trying to undo it so I'm wondering whether I've got a broken spring in one of these and that remains to be found out 